All right, so my name is Richard, and today I'm going to be talking about the shortest path problem and different ways to solve it. So what is the shortest path problem? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like, but here's the definition anyway. The shortest path problem is the problem of finding a path between two vertices on a graph such that the sum of its weights is minimized. So here's a graph to help you understand it better. You can think of vertices as points, and you can think of edges as lines. And so what the shortest path problem is, is you're trying to find the shortest distance between two points. Why do we care? Well, because it's applicable to everyday life. So for example, when we're trying to find Nemo, or when we're using Google Maps. So when you use Google Maps, you put in a starting destination, and you put in an ending destination. And it spits out like a, it tells you a route that you can take to minimize your travel time. Well, how does it do that? That's where this handsome gentleman comes in. His name is Edsger W. Dijkstra. And he's one of the most famous like Dutch computer scientists and mathematician. And one of the many things he's known for is Dijkstra's algorithm. This is Dijkstra's algorithm. It's a little bit lengthy to read, so I'm not going to read it to you. So here's an example instead. Dijkstra's algorithm. So look at the graph. So I have five, six, seven, seven different vertices. And between each vertices is a number. And that represents like length or time. It doesn't really matter. So between A and B, you can think of it as like four miles. And you want to go from A to F. And you want to minimize the distance. So in our example, let's say we have Nemo's dad at A, and we have Nemo at F. And Nemo's dad wants to find Nemo. So how do you do so? So Dijkstra's algorithm, when you first start out, you have to input values for each vertex. So each vertex is going to be infinity, because we don't know how to get there yet. And for A, it's going to be 0, because the distance from A to A is 0. Next, you go visit A. So when you, when you visit A, I'm going to color it red, you push it onto an array of visit arrays. And then that's not right. And then you look at all the unvisited uh, vertex vertices of its neighbors. So in this instance, it's B, C, and E. And we calculate the distance from those vertices to the source, so A. So for B, it's going to be 4. For C, it's going to be 3. And for E, it's going to be 7. And that's what I'm doing here. Next, we visit the next unvisited uh, vertex that's the, that has the smallest distance from the source. In this case, it's C. So we go to, three, uh, go to C, and we color it red, and we push it onto the array. So from here, we again go through the algorithm. We visit the unvisited um, vertices, and we calculate their distances. So for C, you can go to B, D, and E. And at B, the distance you're calculating is actually how, how far it takes to go to B from the source, so A. So for C, to the source is 3. So from B to C is now going to be 3 plus 6. And that gives you 9. So the distance to B is 9. But you already have a 4 there. And you're looking for the minimum value. So you don't change that value. But you do change it for D, because right now it's infinity. And so instead, you can put 14 there, which is 3 plus 11. And for E, it's going to be 3 plus 8, which is 11. And that's greater than 7. So you don't need to change that. And so we just keep repeating this process, going to the smallest distance unvisited node uh, or vertex. And you just keep repeating it until you finally, and you're always pushing it onto the array of visited um, vertices, until you finally reach your destination. And once you push that onto the array, you're done. You found out what the shortest is, is between A and F, which is 11. And, you, and you're given. You can also keep track of how you get there. So in this case, you, to get there, you go from A to B to D to F. So what's the time complexity of this algorithm? There's two ways to go about implementing this. The first way is to use the array like I did to keep track of visited vertices. So here's an example of um, what it would look like in the, in the program. So in this case, the big O notation is O of n squared, because you have to go through each array within the array. The second way is to use a binary heap to keep track of visited vertices. In this case, the big O is n times log n. 
So is there an easier way, is there a more efficient way to visit, um, to find the shortest path? The answer is yes. Let's go back to our example. So this is going to be a new example. So let's say Nemo, he's at F. He gets lost again. But this time, he gets really, really lost. Like, he ends up in an aquarium in the middle of Texas. And now his dad needs to rent a car to go find him. So let me reset the graph to make it easier. So now, when you go from A to B, it's no longer length or distance. It's a cost. So from A to B, it's going to cost Nemo's dad $4 to go to A to, from A to B. You could think of that as um, paying for gas or going to 7-Eleven to make a pit stop, whatever. You'll notice that there's also negative numbers on there. What does that mean? So let's say Nemo's dad, um, like times are tough, he wants to moonlight as a Lyft driver. So at D, he can actually pick up Dory and take her to B. And you notice there's an arrow too pointing where you have to go. So at D, he can pick up Dory and go to B, and Dory's going to pay him a dollar to do so. Same thing at E. He can pick up this turtle and go to C. So that's the setup for this diagram. And so this algorithm is actually called Bellman Ford's algorithm. And it's invented by these two guys. And this is how you do it. But since we have an example, I'm not going to read this to you. So Bellman's Ford algorithm, to start off, you have to do the same thing. You have to initialize all the distances or values. Sorry, not distances, costs or values. So in this case, I'm going to make a chart to make it uh, easier. And so Bellman Ford's algorithm says that you should always iterate through the algorithm v minus 1 times, v being the number of vertices. So I have six vertices on here. So you, you iterate through it five times at most. So to start off, and one more thing, instead of going to unvisited nodes this time, I'm going to go clockwise. So I'm going to go from A to B to C to F to E to D. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to keep track of visited nodes anymore. So my first iteration, when I, go for, when I go to A, I look at all the neighbors that have outgoing edges. So that's B, C, and D. And I input those values into the table. Same thing with B. Except this time, going to the distance, the cost we're calculating for C is 9, because it's 4 plus 5. And it's already higher than what's already in the table. So we're not going to change it. We're looking to minimize cost this time. Same thing for C, except this time we can initialize F. F has no outgoing edges, so we can skip it. Now we go to E. Right now, you'll notice that E is not initialized. It's infinity. We don't know how to get there yet. So we can skip that, too, for this first iteration. When we go to D, that's when, we, that's when things get interesting. D will initialize E, so that's going to give it a value 7. But it's also going to change the value of B, because now you can go from A to D to B for a cost of 1, which is lower than going from A to B directly. So you can change that. And that's the first loop through this um, algorithm. The second loop, it's going to be mostly unchanged, C, and then you skip F. But this time when you go to E, you can actually do something with it, because previously it was not initialized. So now you can change C, because going from E to C is, a, is well, you'll, you'll earn $2 from through it, going through that route. So that, that value is actually going to be lower than what we have in the table. And so we can change it. D is not going to change. And then we're done with the second loop. The third loop, act, nothing changes. So we don't even need to, we can actually break the algorithm right here. The five iterations I was talking about earlier is the max you have to do. But since we haven't changed, since the third loop isn't going to change anything, we no longer have to continue the program. So what's the time complexity of this one? It's um, Each step in the algorithm has its own big O notation. So when you sum it up, it's going to be O of V E, and which is basically linear, O of N. So back to our original question, how does Google Maps figure out the shortest path for you? Well, the answer is no one knows, because they've, they've, never, made the pub they've never made it public what algorithm they use. But it is likely to be one of the shortest path algorithms out there, either Dijkstra, Bellman Ford, or any of the other ones. Regardless, you do know that using Dijkstra and Bellman Ford will always help you find Nemo. So that's the end of my lecture. Thank you for listening.